This is a father and son story. It's a success story, a failure story, a teamwork and trust story. But it's much bigger than that. It all started five generations ago on these same waters. And the next chapter begins right about now. Simple is good. Simple is good. Um, Mike, you can go first. Uh, give us your name, where we're at, and uh, what you do here in Key West. Uh, my name is Mike Sear. I was born and raised in Key West. Fourth generation charter boat captain, 39 years. I did deep sea for 23. I switched over to flats fishing. Both my sons, Brandon and Jared, are flats guides too. My name is Brandon Sear. I'm a professional fly fishing guide in Key West, Florida. I followed in my father and brother's footsteps and never looked back. Key West may seem like the kind of place where fishing is easy, but the burn on Brandon's face tells you it takes days, years, a life in the sun to be this good. It helps when your best resource is your pop. Fishing for us is just a lifestyle, something that comes second nature to us. We're not really thinking about it, it's kind of just a natural instinct. When we go out, we're evaluating the tides, water temperature, wind direction, little factors people don't think about. It just kind of comes naturally to us. It's what we've done our entire lives. That's how I roll. Key West is the last chapter in the Florida Keys. The end of Monroe County and the beginning of a vast ocean nation. Keep on running, and you can hit Cuba or Cancun. Key West can feel remote, even desolate. Something great-great-grandpa Sear knew well. But people and tourism are never far. The Grand Slam is basically the greatest achievement in flat fishing. You have tarpon, permit, and bonefish. Typically, in most places in the world, those fish are spread out over a large area. We're fortunate enough here in the Keys that you can catch all three on the same flat. But the trick is, is there's so many variables that are involved. All of our permit are just coming back in from the spot. So there's not that many around, so you're only getting a few chances. 
and permit are already considered the hardest fish in the world to catch on the flats. It almost feels like you breathe wrong and they spook. But one of the hardest things is knowing when to move to different spots because you have a very certain window on tide opportunities. When we get there for tarpon and as soon as you get enough light, hopefully you get the tarpon first thing. As the sun comes up, move over to permit, depending on what the tide is. And permit's always gonna be the hardest. So you try to knock them out in the second way because then you can basically find bonefish on any tide down here. We're very lucky for that. The first stop in the Grand Slam, the Silver King. So we're down here off Key West. We're on a guppy hatch. In the midsummer like this, the water temperature gets pretty hot, almost 90 degrees, and you get shrimp and guppies that hatch out of the grass. You know, see all the grass floating around, it kind of dies and floats up, but it creates a little haven for these tarpon. Makes them super hungry, easy target for them. They don't have to burn a lot of energy and makes them very acceptable to eat a fly. Up there at uh, about one o'clock, too. These are different fish. Fish on. Fish will gather overnight and get in these big giant pods. And we found these few spots that first light before they start their migration pattern as they're coming in from offshore from spawning, we'll get this opportunity right as the light's low. Fish are nice and happy. They're just kind of waking up, starting to get moving. And if you can get a fly in front of them, they're gonna eat almost every time. Oh, I love my job. <laughs> the problem is the fish don't know we're making a TV show. Tarpon are spectacular jumpers, but they rarely let us know where their acrobatics will take place. Sometimes the cameras miss, but sometimes the poon is right in the crosshairs. Ah, went through the leader on that one. Next! Good way to start the morning, second cast. Five minutes in.
Hang on, son. Yeah, baby. Come here, Pops. He's just so happy that we're going to release him. What an awesome Beautiful. fish. catch the virtually uncatchable permit, an angler needs time and patience. As luck would have it, one of the best places on earth to catch permit is right here. Huge permit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost him. Hold on. Can we agree on which is the toughest Grand Slam species? The next nominee, Permit. Notoriously skittish, often traveling in pairs, turning their noses up at most presentations. The sun is out and the wind is down. Quality conditions for sight fishing. Right there, go ahead and make a cast. He's in his, I don't want him to spook. Catching a permit requires two simple things. Highly sharpened skills. Can you get it? And the grace of the gods. Got him! Yeah, baby! Way to go, Pops. Good cast, old man. <laughs> that just goes to show you how it takes the right fish, because I mean, that, that cast didn't look any different from the ones you made at the other fish. I agree, 100%. You gonna grab him for me, son? Absolutely, Pops. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! Oh, happy day. Good Thanks. job. Great cast, Pops. It's the holy grail of the flats fishing world. You want to release her? I certainly would like to. Way to go, Pop. Here she goes. Yes! <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Oh. That was awesome. Woo. All right, let's go get our bone bush. Let's finish out the slam yep. for the day. One last species to go the gray ghost. It is maybe, perhaps, sometimes, 
the toughest one to land. Down here off of uh, Key West, we're chasing the hardest achievement in flats fishing, which is to get the Grand Slam. So far, we've gotten tarpon and permit. Out here with my dad, we're gonna try to see if we can get the bonefish. Pulling a skiff to find bones tests your calm, and casting to bones tests your nerve. Brandon's eyes don't fail him. So right here at 9 o'clock, 20 feet, 30 feet. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Bob, too! Oh, good job, great cast. Thank you, son. He is very upset, huh? Don't be that way. He's still not saying uncle. <laughs> Feisty, huh? All right, feisty. Bam. Yeah, way to go, Pops. Awesome, Don. Great guiding. In the late 1990s, anglers and guides in the Keys noticed that the bonefish population was declining. That led to the creation of Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Thanks to its efforts, we've learned a lot more about their behavior and future. Bonefish Tarpon Trust started back in the late 90s because of concern from guides and anglers about the decline of the bonefish population in the Florida Keys. So we've been working ever since then to figure out why the population declined. Yeah! Woo. Believe it or not, that inspired some research of bonefish in the Bahamas because with the population decline in the Keys, we didn't have enough fish to study to learn about bonefish. Gorgeous. We've been doing tagging and tracking research of bonefish for close to 10 years. 75% uh, of the tagged fish that are caught, recaptured, are within just a kilometer of where they were tagged. And a lot of times in a place the size of someone's house, a very small area. But we also found that they migrated long distances to spawn offshore in water that's thousands of feet deep. So now we're taking that information and bringing it back to the Florida Keys and trying to uh, figure out the specific home ranges for bonefish throughout the Keys, but also where they spawn, so we can determine if there's enough fish in the Keys now to sustain the population by local spawn. Let's reflect on this for a moment. The weather cooperated. The fish showed up. All three species in two days father and son. Grand Slam only begins to describe their accomplishment. Yeah! Awesome day, thank you, son. How many more generations of Sears will achieve a Grand Slam? One can only wonder. Our story ends here, but theirs is to be continued.